crafty friends welcome to another pigment powders 101 series video today we're going to be looking at using pigment powders with stencils if you want to watch the rest of the series before you watch this video or afterwards you can find a link to the playlist in the video description or via the playlist section on my channel page so these are the pigment powders I'm going to be using today, Luscious Pigment Powders and Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powders. And I thought what might be helpful is if I show you how to make a few backgrounds using pigment powders and stencils, and then I'll pick one and we'll make a card from it. So I've got some panels that are about, let's have a look, four by five and three quarter inches and this is mixed media paper which means it will take all sorts of media really well you can get it pretty wet and it won't fall apart so first of all i'm going to put my grip mat here this is the large grip mat from waffle flower but other grip mats are available and i'm going to pop my mixed media paper there and for my stencil i've got this large I guess they're equal signs maybe, a large equal sign stencil and I'm going to pop it over my paper like that. The grip mat holds down the paper and it holds down the stencils. I'm not sure where this stencil came from but if you want to know where it came from or any of the other products that I use then do let me know in the comments and I will look that up for you. So I've got some Versamark Watermark Ink Refill here and I've just popped some on my mat and I'm going to pick it up with my dedicated embossing ink dauber and go through the stencil with the dauber, putting ink down in all the apertures of my stencil. You don't want to put too much ink on your dauber because you don't want to squish it underneath the stencil. You just want enough to go in the gaps but not go underneath the bits of the stencil. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you do. It depends what look you're going for. So I think that's pretty well coated. These grip mats really do hold down stencils well, so if you've got a delicate stencil, don't just tear it off, otherwise you'll uh, tear the stencil. If I tilt this to the light, I can see that it's got shiny patches, which is where the embossing ink is. And now I want a couple of colours. I think I'm going to go for teal and green. They're very similar colours but they'll sort of make a nice subtle blend I hope and all I'm going to do is use one of these little makeup brushes to pick up the powders and drop them on like that and then I've got a big fan brush which is very soft I think I said before, but these I got from Superdrug. They're very cheap makeup brushes, which are perfect for this kind of thing. And then very gently, I'm just going to brush the pigment powders across here. And hopefully you can see that they'll stick to the embossing ink which they have done. Now I might just take a little bit more in a couple of places, see if I can get a bit of better coverage. And the, I think the trick is not to put too much embossing ink down because when you brush across it, you don't want to smear the embossing ink. So you can leave this as it is, but I think a good idea is to mist with water your card because there is binder in this pigment powder which means when it gets wet it will bind the pigment the color and the mica to the embossing ink 
to the paper and stop it being brush offable. So you can squirt straight on there, but you might end up with too much water on there. So one of the easiest things to do is squirt, squirt, squirt to create a mist and just waft your paper through the mist. And that should be enough to activate the binder and get your pigment powders stuck where they should be. So that's the first technique, using embossing ink through a stencil and dry brushing the pigment powder over it. And you can see the lovely shimmer there and the gradient between the two, the teal and the green. So now I've made this bit wet, I've got some wet powder here. I'll grab a bit of scrap paper and just wipe that over there. And now I've got a bit of green paper, which I can use for something else. So the next thing I'm going to do is put some modelling paste through a stencil. This is Liquitex light modelling paste and I like this because it's fairly translucent and fairly quick drying. And all I'm going to do is, let's think, let's take the purple one and we'll get a spatula of paste here. Oops, there's a bit of teal powder left on that so we're going to get a teal purple blend and then i'm going to just tap in a little bit of the purple pigment powder now when you do this with modeling paste if you're using a shimmery powder one with mica in it you might find that this uh, dulls the shine and you just get color you can get, and I've got some on order because I wanted to add a pot to my arsenal. Um, you can get clear gloss modelling paste. I think it's a cosmic shimmer one that I'm getting. I will uh, use it in future videos once it's arrived. But that is supposed to um, maintain the colour of whatever you add to it and any luster that you add to it. So with this one here... This makes a lovely purple texture paste, but it won't be glittery or shimmery. And obviously, the more colour you add to your paste, the more intense the colour will be. Okay, so that looks pretty well mixed to me. And now you can use this as you would any texture paste. So I've got this stencil and all I'm going to do is swipe my texture paste down to fill up the holes. And if you didn't mix your powder in complete with the paste if you left it kind of marbled you'd get a really interesting marbled effect when you scraped it through and there we have some purple modeling paste through a stencil so that's another way and you don't need to squirt this with water because there's water moisture in the texture paste and that will bind the color to the texture paste it won't brush off at all so you can do similar things with other mediums I've got some Liquitex matte gel medium here. You might use this for uh, glue or for collaging. And this does dry clear. Let's have a bit of gold, see how we get on with this. So I'm just going to tap some of that into there. Mix it up with the palette knife again. So this will give a matte finish because it's a matte medium. So this is a bit thinner than modelling paste, but it does swipe in much the same way. I haven't got quite enough to cover the whole piece but that's okay 
that will just give a variegated background. So we'll set that aside to dry and then once it's dry we'll come back and look at how glimmery it is. So we've got another stencil here and I've got some clear gesso. This is Dina Wankley Media Clear Gesso. I really, really like this gesso. If I could only have one clear gesso ever again for the rest of my life, it would be this one because it's incredibly smooth. It's not gritty like some of the other clear gessos. Right, so there's some clear gesso there. What colour shall we use? Let's try this copper. Make sure a clean brush so again this is thinner than texture paste probably thinner than the um, matte gel medium that I just used and as I say the more uh, pigment powder you add the more intense the color will be So you could scrape this through, but you could also use a sponge dauber to add this. So I've got a uh, basic flat sponge dauber here and I'll pick some up and I can sponge that on. And this again will uh, not be movable once it's dried because I think the gesso will activate and seal in the pigment so it shouldn't shift once it's dried but we can test that later i can pop a bit of water on and see if it shifts So there we go it's a bit sort of squelchy it's obviously squished under the stencil a bit but there's nothing wrong with that at all it's not as crisp say as the one we did with the embossing dauber with the equal signs but uh, it would make a nice distressed rustic background we'll set that one aside to dry I'm running out of drying space now <laughs> that I'm gonna put in a pot of water because I can rinse it out later and it'll be fine so I've got another stencil here it's not quite big enough to stretch across the piece of paper so when I can find the edge end of the washi there it is I'll tape it down at the bottom and I've got some deco art crafters acrylic paint this is one of my favorite acrylics in fact I only have deco art crafters acrylic now uh, because it's just really nice. It's an opaque acrylic with a kind of matte finish and it just works really well for the purposes that I use it for, which is a bit of art journaling and on cards and things. So let's brush that copper off and we can get some raspberry jam luscious powder. I'm going to use another dauber but I'm going to mix this together with a palette knife just to make sure it's all mixed in so that's given me a lovely light violet-ish colour or a light magenta I could maybe add a bit more again this will I think kill the shimmer from the mica so if you're going to do a lot of this and you want to invest in some pigment powders, you might want just to get something like Brusho, which doesn't have any mica in it. If mica, the shimmer and the shine is not something you're particularly bothered about. So that's a very pale lilac-y pink. And again, once this has dried, the colour is not going to go anywhere at all because it will be sealed within the acrylic. If you don't load that up too much if it's a fairly dry dauber then you hopefully shouldn't get too much bleed through underneath the stencil so pick up your color dob it off and then don't press down too hard you can go over and coat the whole thing but then maybe press down and you know where you've got white that you don't want or whatever colour the paper is underneath 
So the medium that you choose to mix your pigment powders in um, will give you different different results. So if you want something thick and textural through your stencil, then pick a modeling paste or a matte gel medium or a gloss gel medium. If you want something that's not textural, that is flat, then you could go with maybe gesso. You could use white gesso or clear gesso or white acrylic paint. And of course, you don't just have to add it to white paint. You could add your pigment powders to other color paints to change their color slightly. The world is your oyster, really. So that will do on the stenciling front. This is where I pressed a bit heavier, so I did get some bleed through underneath the stencil, but this is a lot cleaner. But you can definitely see that lovely pigment powder colour, but no real discernible shimmer. So another thing you can do with pigment powders and stencils is mist the paper through the stencil with water. Not too much, you just want a little bit of wetness there. And then sprinkle the pigment powders over. This might not have been the best stencil to use because they're quite small apertures, but you know, we, we'll see. You could mist it on a bit more just to get things moving a bit more. this you'll probably get some bleeding underneath the stencil but that's the kind of look you're going to get with this technique and there you go you've got a nice subtle variegated sparkly background where some areas have got lots of uh, pigment powder and some areas have only got a tiny little bit and because you've made it wet then that will bind the pigment powder to the paper. You could always give it an extra spritz if you want to. And then what you can do is take your spritzed wet powdered stencil, flip it over, press it down, and then with a clean microfiber cloth, say, just press it down like this. Give it a good press. And then you'll get another subtle pattern and that would make a lovely background for something. So that's another use. If you've got a, a pigment powdered wet stencil, then you can use that almost like a stamp to print with. So instead of spritzing first, you can sprinkle first, like this. We might do the green and the teal again, because they're a lovely combination. You could leave it like that and then spritz with water. Or you could very carefully just coax things around with your fan brush. And depending on the pigment powders that you use, you might get some really lovely effects. So. I think brushos and cosmic shimmer powders, no, not cosmic shimmer powders, nouveau shimmer powders, that's right. They are often made up of multiple pigments in the same tub. And when you spritz them with water, you can see all the different colors. So experiment with the pigment powders that you have to see what kind of effects you get because they can be quite spectacular. So I've just dusted that around and now I shall spritz it. And you can see the colours start to dissolve. You can leave it like that to dry if you want to, or you can take it off. And there you can see, again, you've got that kind of variegated look. And that will stay put now once it's dry. Just tap off any bits of powder that haven't been caught because you've wetted the binder or you've wet the binder. And I can use this, hopefully, to make a print. So another thing you can do is take some 
Reinca, this is embossing ink Reinca. If you haven't got this, you can use glycerin, which is available from supermarkets and pharmacies. You can mix it with some pigment powder of some description, whatever one you fancy. You take a clean dauber, mix it together to make a nice gooey mess, and then you can put it through a stencil. So this is just a little bit different from the effect we got when we put embossing ink and then brushed the powder over the top of it. So another technique is to do some heat embossing with luscious powders and stencils. So I'm going to give them a paper, still mixed media paper, a good going over with corn flour. This just removes any static, any grease, any stickiness. You can use corn flour, you can use talcum powder, you can use an anti-static pouch. And then I'm going to pop on a star stencil and I'm going to use my embossing ink dauber. The stencil isn't sticking because I put corn flour on my grip mat, so I've just got to hold it still with my hand. This is when a bit of washi tape might come in useful. Whoops, oh dear. This might look a bit messy when I do it, but that's okay because it's it can be a background, a messy mixed media background. So now we've got our inked stars on mixed media paper. And these are the luscious powder embossing powders we made in a previous video. So do check that video out if you want to know how to heat emboss with your pigment powders. So I've got the teal one on there and now I'm going to put on some of the raspberry jam one. So I've got that in my heating tray, I'm going to heat it like I would normal embossing powder. So that's cooled down now and all the embossing powder has set and I can go over it with a microfiber cloth and brush off the excess pigment and now I've got an, a stenciled heat embossed luscious powder pigment powder pattern and you can see that lovely shimmer and shine from the luscious powder in the stars there. Now something you can do with your inks this is saltwater taffy distress oxide. I'm going to smush it onto my palette there. I'm not going to add any water to it. I'm not smushing right now, but I am going to sprinkle on a bit of this Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powder in White Pearl. That's probably more than enough. And then I'm going to use an ink blending tool, mix that in with the ink and blend it through a stencil like I normally would. We can get a bit of an ombre going, we can have lighter at the bottom, darker at the top. And this gives the ink ever such a slight pearlized shimmer. So you can turn your regular inks into shimmery inks. I'm going to do the same thing with a dye ink. So this is Catherine Pooler Uptown. And give that a good mix. And because this is a dye ink and it is translucent, it's not opaque or chalky like the oxides, you'll get more of a pearlescent shimmer with the oxides, the chalkiness of it, the pigment in the ink, which is part of what makes it such a good ink, will mask some of the shimmer that you add to it. But these dye inks are 
translucent as I say so they shouldn't mask the shimmer so this should come off as a really nice shimmery ink and I don't know if you can see that but there is definitely more shimmer with that particular ink And you can do the same thing with this give it a spritz with water flip it over and press it down say with a microfiber cloth or something lift it up and then you've got a lovely subtle pattern and that will have the shimmer in the ink and you can smush through a stencil you can take an ink you can add some pixie powder or Whatever you've got, you can add some water. You can pick that up with your smusher. Try not to get too much water on it, just enough, or to, not too much paint, just enough to smush. And you might not get a perfect, well you won't get a perfect impression. But you can just go over it like that. Some of it will probably squeeze under the stencil, but when you peel it off, you'll get your stenciled shape and that will have shimmer and shine in it from the powder. And yet again, waste not, want not. We will press that down onto there and get a very subtle pattern. So there we go, I count 13 ways of using pigment powders with stencils. And don't forget, you can also use homemade shimmer sprays that you've made with pigment powders and spray those through stencils. There's a whole video about that. But what I'm gonna do next is set these aside to dry overnight and then come back and make a very quick card for you using these backgrounds. So for this card, I took a checkerboard embossing folder and embossed a piece of smooth white cardstock and trimmed it down. So it's, I think about four by six inches. I then glued this to another piece of smooth white cardstock and then trimmed it down to create a border. I did run around the edges with my embossing tool to give them a beveled edge to make them look like they'd been die cut. And then after I'd glued it to the front of my card blank, which is five by seven inches, I die cut some hearts from some of the stencil backgrounds that we've made. So this is the one that I did with acrylic paint. And I used that as my largest heart cause it's quite bold. And I stuck that on the card using tacky glue. And then I cut a smaller heart out of the background we made by dusting the powder over a stencil and then spritzing with water. I popped that up on craft foam because I felt it needed a bit of dimension there. And then I cut an even smaller heart out of the background we made by spritzing the stencil with water and then sprinkling on the embossing powder. And that I stuck straight down with tacky glue. I chose a birthday sentiment to add to this card and I stamped it in stays on ink on vellum because stays on sticks really well to vellum. I then stamped it again in embossing ink and embossed it with clear embossing powder to give it a nice glossy, slightly dimensional finish. And I added that across my hearts. I chose to do it on vellum because I didn't want to obscure too much of the pattern behind. I stuck that on using my Xyron sticker maker so that the whole back of that piece of vellum was covered in sticky and that way you won't see any of the sticky. And to finish off my card, I made some homemade enamel dots by using some Warm Wishes Luscious Powder, painting that on. And that's the powder that we used to make the pattern on the tiny heart there. And then I cut that with my circle cutting die to make the enamel dots, just dotted them around, stuck them down with tacky glue, and eventually I put some glossy accents on top. So now I've got some glittery gold coordinating dimensional faux enamel dots. 
And that is this card done. Right, I hope you found this video helpful. Well done for sticking with it. I appreciate it. It's been a bit of a marathon. Do come back in a couple of days for the next video in the series. Subscribe, like, ring the notification bell, all those good things. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.